Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Visit tnvacation.com to start planning your next trip to Tennessee. Thank you, Emily. Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Emily, before I introduce today's extremely special guests, what's something you've discovered this week at Discovery Park in America? While I was looking through our technology gallery, I learned that the word photography is derived from the Greek and it translates roughly into light drawing. There you go. You learn something every day when you hang out at Discovery Park of America. So my so my special guests today, they also know about podcasts, and they started their own podcast, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Welcome, Austin Alexander and Alex Carpenter. Thank hey, you. everybody. Nice to be here. Thank you for having us on today. You mm-hmm. bet. So, um, Austin, I tell you what, we're going to start with you first. Oh, okay. uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about... Um, uh, your your childhood and and where you came from and um, tell us a little bit about what you do for fun. All right. Um. Well. Uh. So childhood. Um. Well. See, I kind of had uh, sort of a normal ish childhood. Nothing too extraordinary. I was a kind of a when I was a young lad. I uh. I just kind of. I dozed off a lot in class. I wasn't that good. At at school, to be honest, I I went to Black Oak, by the way, for about uh, kindergarten to like fifth grade. I and for people who are so listening much. that aren't from here, is that in O'Brien County? Uh yes, that is that is. Okay. So it's still in our county, but um, I like I later moved to another school that's still in our county, but just a little closer to my house. But um, yeah, I uh I went to Black Oak for a little and uh. I, I wasn't really that good at school, but once I uh, came to Hillcrest, which is where uh, I graduated from, for like from eighth grade, uh, that's where I met Alex. Actually, it was uh, sixth grade, I believe. And so um, I was at first, I wasn't really too interested in school, and I I didn't really care. But then I kind of saw how Alex and some of the other kids kind of like acted, and they seemed really like serious about school, and that kind of inspired me. I was like, dang. Oh, well, why am I not like making good grades and stuff? And so then I, I continue to actually start making A's. And so I still try to like be myself, but it was kind of nice to, you know, it was like this feeling of succession. And so I feel like it had played a big role in like who I am now, and, like what I do. Um, what was the other question you asked? I'm what sorry. What do you do for fun? What do you do for fun? Oh, what do I do for fun? Um, I like to draw a lot. I'm, I'm very big on drawing and, uh, I like anything artsy. Uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm in my uh, high school's art club. I'm one of the vice presidents. And uh, I just, I really enjoy drawing. I really enjoy um, just hanging out with friends and just stuff like that. And that. Those are my two favorite pastimes pretty much. And what grade are you in now? Where do you go to school? Uh, I'm in 11th or I'm a junior in uh, at O'Brien County Central. High school. Yeah. It's called school. O'Brien County Central is that what they call it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now how about you, um, Alex, tell us a little bit about your past and, and where you went to school and what you do for fun. So, um, my name is Alex Carpenter and a little, a little less known fact about me is that I was actually not born in Tennessee. I've lived my whole life here, but I was actually born in Stuttgart, Arkansas, which is the duck hunting and rice capital of the world. For those of you who are wondering what on earth that is, because it, it shares its name with a city in Germany that is famous for uh, something. I can't really remember what it is, but um, I was born there. I moved to um, Troy, Tennessee at a very young age in my life. I believe I was like well, maybe two. I was not very – it might have been younger than that, but I, I, Troy is my home. O'Brien County is my home. Uh, I love it here. I really enjoy the opportunities we get. It's It's a lot – it's a small town, small community vibe that we have here that you don't really get in a uh, large city. 
So I attended Hillcrest Elementary, which is in Troy, for my entire middle school career. I loved it. Go Cougars. Uh, I'm very proud of where I'm from. Um, I, I've always tried to just be the best version of myself that I can be and help others and just be someone that people can turn to. And I currently am, uh, I currently attend O'Brien County Central High School with Austin and we're both juniors here in 11th grade. And, uh, we do our best to help mm-hmm. to do what we can at school. And, uh, yeah. What I do for fun, well, I really enjoy to watch sports. Truthfully, uh, I live on ESPN. I'm always doing something with sports. Either I'm at a sporting event or I'm watching something on TV or watching a documentary. I'm always going, basically. Now, what do you want to do? Do you want to, uh, as you continue and you graduate and you go to college, you want to focus on some aspect of sports? Well, I've considered one of my dreams has always been to be like an ESPN announcer. I've always thought that would be amazing. When I was little, I would play like the uh, sports video games like Madden and I would turn off the sound on uh, the thing and just commentate my own gameplay. I know that sounds that sounds terrible, but that that's what I would do. So but uh, I would love to do something like that in my future. But I've also considered, you know, going into law because I like to help people and just make an impact. Well, nothing says you can't do both of those things. So that's I great. And that. you've, you've got a, you've got a good, good voice. We're going to talk about that voice in a minute. Um, before we move on, I do want to let you all know who are listening that Stuttgart in Germany is known for having both Porsche and Mercedes Benz there as their headquarters there. So I knew it was something, but I just could not remember. It's nothing like the duck hunting and rice capital of the world, though. <laughs> That's right. That's right. No, we're we're uh, you know we're working on a waterfowl exhibit at Discovery Park, and so we've been working with some of the folks in Stuttgart, Arkansas, um, on getting content for that. So, um, and how about you, Austin? Um, what do you see as yourself doing in the future? Oh man, I definitely see myself going into something artistic. I need. There's no way I could do a cubicle job or. I need something where I can express who I am like to the world uh, and what I'm about, like what's in my mind. Like I want to be an artist kind of, that would be my dream job. Uh, But realistically though, I've also kind of went into other things such as like psychology, being a therapist and like just helping people. That's just kind of my like natural like way of, you know, kind of like how, what I want to do with my life. Basically I want to at least help people or, show myself to the world or do both. So let's talk a little bit about your podcast, which is uh, why I asked you on here. I heard you guys are doing a really successful podcast. And um, so, so other people out there may want to start their own podcast. So I thought, Hey, let's, let's hear how you guys started yours and how it's going. So where did the um, idea first come from? So the idea originated in third period college algebra on a random morning. I come into class. I'm someone who really has spur of the moment ideas. Like our school has an esports club or a team. And that idea was formed in a walk from one end of the school to the other. As I was walking to the front office, I thought, I want to do something. And I just thought, bam, esports, something new. And so I'm someone who has spur of the moment ideas. And I had a spur of the moment idea because I listened to a lot of podcasts. I said, you know, what if we had a podcast? So I'm thinking about, well, how could we do this? This is no way. And I walk in there. I see my good friend Austin and Janie, who Janie Roberts is a a junior in our grade as well. I sit next to them in that class. And I'm like, hey, do you guys want to help me with something? And I tell them about our podcast idea. And they just are like, that sounds amazing. They, They jump on it. They're willing to help me. And I found an app called Anchor on the App Store which our AP U.S. history teacher during COVID, he would record his um, his teachings and his lessons on there and he would upload them. So he taught me how to use it. And then I just basically implemented our own thing. I found me my good computer tech guy friend, Bryson Dunn, who does all, all of our editing. And uh, we, could not do, yeah, we could not do no, it without him. It would not be possible. No. But, and basically... I all from there. I yeah, know. like just it was like destined to happen. They all the pieces just came together. Mm-hmm. So who uh, who was your first 
when you were thinking, okay, let's do a podcast, who were you going to reach out to for, to be your first guests? So it was during the depths of football season, and our football team at O'Brien County Central is not historically the greatest football team ever known to man. But we've recently hired a new coach, and there's been a lot of excitement around the school about you know the future and you know building a new culture. So what I would do is during football season every Thursday. Day, I would interview the spotlight player of the week from the last um, from the last football game, and they would talk about them and just talk about the game, and it was really good. And that, so I I tried to reach the football, the sports audience in Austin. I'll let you explain what you did in your yeah. So a lot of people, um, it's it's kind of like a thing where uh, you you know you have Alex's intro, and then he he then gives like a segue to the interview. And so we were actually really ambitious with our first episode. So we had like three different interviews with three different people doing like, see, we have another person. I believe it was Janie. It was. And was there another, or was it just us three? It was just just us three. Cause we were all three in college algebra, like what Alex said. Um, so we all three had like different people and different interviews. Um, and so my, my segment, uh, man. So my idea for the segment was kind of just like what's something I would genuinely be interested in, like as a student and as myself. And so I was like, man, I should really interview teachers. I should get to know like the other half of teachers you don't see in school, you know, because a lot of people forget teachers actually have a life too. And it's not just all about school. They don't live under the school and like, (laughs) you know, a lot, even though a lot of people think that they're not and they're precious souls that are just like everyone else. So I wanted to explore that. And so the first teacher I had in mind was Miss Lana Warren and she's my ACT prep teacher but she also teaches uh, sophomore English too and and senior English and senior English dual enrollment and oh my gosh she is the most kindred spirit I've ever met she is so she's not afraid to be goofy she's amazing and she's such a free spirit I love her so much and she was she was our first teacher of the week which is what this segment is called and uh she was so amazing. It was like, she was so proud of us, like for doing the podcast thing and stuff. And she was just a really good first interview and really energetic. And our friend Janie did mm-hmm. a segment called Hidden Gems of OC, where she would try to highlight the special things that Central has that, mm-hmm. you know, you might not know about at a first glance. Cause you know, everybody knows about her football team or about mm-hmm. a, a teacher cause they go there, but do people realize, for example, her first episode was about our girls cross country team because it is not really well known, but they are a like state renowned powerhouse for girls cross country. And not a lot of people know that. So she tried to raise awareness for that. And that was her little segment that she does. So she did Hidden Gems of OC. And um, a couple weeks later, we started a new segment called Exploring OC where um, our friends Lainey Taylor and um, Avery Hill, they would go to different clubs and ask them to just give an example or give an interview of you know what they are, like Pep Club, um, HOSA, Key Club, National Honor Society, just to name some that we've done, Esports Club. Have you had your, uh, local podcasters on your podcast? Not yet, but – yeah. but, that's a true yes, statement. That is true. I've actually talked to um, – I'm trying to get something working with the chancellor at UTM, Dr. Carver, to come on our podcast and talk about college life. But I'm still I'm still in the works talking with him, getting his schedule worked out for it. Yeah, now, now he's been on our podcast, um, oh. and you have to watch it because he's, he's got a uh, writer that he sends ahead that says all the things you have to have in the studio, like special drinks and special snacks. And no, I'm just kidding. He doesn't really. <laughs> no, oh, that sounds like Dr. Carver. That sounds like him. I, I can imagine no one better for you guys to get uh, than Dr. Carver. He, he was on our podcast and uh, he was really great uh, and very gracious to be on there. And he loves education and he loves students so he's going to be a great he's going to be a great guest i'm i'll definitely tune into that one who's been your favorite guest so far oh oh, no ah man that's a good question that's a good question yeah i'll i'll give mine and then i'll let you do your favorite teacher okay 
My favorite ter- person to interview was probably our head coach of the basketball team, Coach Ralph Turner, because he is a man that has lived a very, very interesting life. He he was a college coach who actually won the national championship for like NI, NIA, NII. I'm not really sure. It was at what Union University, but he won he won the national championship there. He's been coach of the year. He coached on USA basketball. He's coached against players like Dennis Rodman. Uh, he's he's been on coaching staffs with like the who was the head coach? Do you know the head coach at Indiana? Uh, Bobby Knott, he's coached mm-hmm. with people like him. So he's just lived a really interesting life, and he he was a pleasure because he loves to talk, and he always has a story to tell that you've never heard before because when you think you've heard it all, then he says, oh, well, I've been to Japan before, or I've been to Hawaii before, and you think you know everything about him, but nope, you learn something new about him every day. But he is a, he's a very good person. He's a great builder of, of – kids like us he it's really interesting to talk to someone who cares so genuinely about not just winning he he cares more about building his um, players into good good men for the future and it was just really interesting to hear his insight on what he's done through his 33 years of coaching and his however so many years of life and how about you austin who was your favorite okay so i thought about it and so i kind of have uh Two, two out of the, I think, I believe today marked seven. Seven. It's because we just, I just did uh, one of them today, actually. Um, shout out to Coach Johnson uh, with a T. Um, <laughs> uh, I'd say it's between the second and third one. And so the second one is um, my Spanish teacher, Miss Sanchez. And she's actually like, her, this is her first year at OC. And she was so happy to, uh, or at our high school, she was so happy to get teacher of the week, like number two, like straight, it's straight off the bat. And so that's kind of like a memorable one for me because I, uh, I, that's when I gained my confidence kind of, cause I was like, huh, man, this is really fun. And so I started to not look at it as something to be nervous about. Like, Oh God, I got to talk to this teacher. I gotta, I gotta make sure I do good. It's more or less kind of like a, like a relaxing, really fun thing to do. And so that's kind of when I got my confidence. She was a really good interview. But um, also there's Coach Akers, which was the third one. It was a great interview. Yeah, they say it's one of my best interviews that I did. It was, uh, I think it went from, the first interview was like about three, four minutes. Second one was about four, four, five minutes. And then Coach Akers was eight minutes long. And boy, oh boy, that is a long time <laughs> for like comparison. Even now, like it's it's still pretty lengthy. I think it's one of the longest at least. Um but man, he was such a great interview. He was, I was, I remember that day too. Um, I think, I don't know which one of you told him about that, but one of you told him I was nervous. I, I told was, him. Because it was like, it was a teacher I've never had before. And so the other two that I had done previously, um, they were teachers I've had, but um, Coach Akers, he was a like a fresh piece of bread out the oven. And so, man, I was so nervous, but then When I got in there, it was so natural to me. It just, that interview was as smooth as butter, I'd say. He was so, he was so awesome. And I even say hi to him now, which is what I love. He actually likes me. And so I wish I had a class with him, but um, he was such a good interview, man. I I still love him to this day. So do you guys have uh, questions that you prepare in advance? Like, do you know what you're going to ask and, and what kind of, do you have like a go-to set of questions that you ask everyone? Well, um, or, you can go. I was just going to say, um, I don't know. I think Janie did it too. Um, and so I think Avery and Laney do it too. We just kind of um, like, at least for my interviews, uh, I'll, I'll write down questions. I, I know Janie and them do this. And so are the other podcast people. We kind of just write it on a piece of paper um, we'll probably show the teacher or student or which uh, whoever it is like before we do it. So they can kind of get like an idea um, and just uh, like what they're probably like uh, roughly going to say. And then um, sometimes there is some like uh, new questions that would just like, I mean, at least for me, I come up with on the spot, mm-hmm. like just a little side question to like comment on something that they said. 
but yeah, we, we do prepare them in advance because it would be kind of awkward if we didn't. We'd just be kind of randomly talking. So for me personally, when I do my interviews with players or coaches, I always try to ask them a funny moment just for something to give yeah. the, the listener a laugh and just to, you know, lot make the tension less there in the room because they're nervous, except for the coaches. They weren't nervous. They've done this before. But I know, like, for the players I did, they were nervous. They did not want to talk. So I had to kind of ease them into it, you know, so they didn't feel nervous. But I always try to ask, uh, you know, I have two or one or two questions that I ask for sure each podcast. But I just kind of let the conversation flow because, you know, that's the thing about a podcast. It's it's not truly an interview. It's just a conversation yeah. between – me and a really special person that I think deserves to be recognized. And for most people on the podcast or for everybody on the podcast, it's mm-hmm. just nice to talk to them. You know, they're an interesting person and, you know, there's no difference in me talking to you in the hallway or at the grocery store than it is me with a recorder on. Yeah. I agree so uh, we're going to take a quick break and when we get back, I've got a few more questions for you. Looking for a family-friendly vacation destination? The new Tennessee Vacation Planning Guide is out now, and it includes... Let me do that again. Okay. Looking for a family-friendly vacation destination? The new Tennessee Vacation Planning Guide is now out, and it includes tips on the best restaurants in the state, attraction information, where to stay, and more. With the mountains, the music, the rivers, the food, the attractions, and so much more, you'll find the guide is a great way to get the most of your visit to Tennessee. Visit TNVacation.com and get your print or digital copy today. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. It helps us get more people aware of Real Foot Forward. I'm your host, Scott Williams, and our guests today um, are Austin Alexander and Alex Carpenter, who are podcasters here uh, in O'Brien County, and we're chatting about their podcast. Um, I want to ask each of you, what one person would you want to have as your podcast guest who is dead or alive, and why? Oh, man. Oh, this is like another question. Um, I mean, heck, I kind of already know mine. Then you go first, because I'm thinking. Man, okay, I'll go first. I'll, I'll give you some time, Alex. All right. Okay, well, I'm I'm a tennis guy. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm I was never really big on sports as a kid, but um, ever since I got into high school, I immediately went to tennis because of uh, one of my friends. He played and it inspired me. And so there's this one player. He is my all time favorite. Some people listening might recognize him. His name is Roger Federer. He is my idol, and he's such a great guy. And, oh, my gosh, he would be such a good interview, especially since I'm, like, a tennis fanatic. I just – I would love to interview him. Even He's still alive. He's not dead for those who are like, oh, my God, he's dead. No, he, he's still alive. But he's just – he'd have to be, like, the first person that I come to my mind. And I would – I just – he's a great guy. Beat it. It would be a great interview. So if you had to pick between Federer and uh, Dr. Carver, which one would you pick? <laughs> oh, gosh, you, say you don't Dr. have to answer Carver. that. You say Dr. Carver because, you know, he he could actually come on. So Yes, that, yes. That, that is, is realistically that is the answer. Also, the answer. Uh, Dr. Carver, he's actually kind of, like, good to have on the OC podcast because yes. a lot of people – from OC go to Martin that or UTM mm-hmm. like that's their first idea for college I mean that's what I'm considering right now and so, yeah and you know what you're in art my wife teaches art history there so um I can pull some strings and and uh, make sure you get good grades not really just kidding you would get good grades anyway I can I can yeah. tell he's a wonderful artist oh my gosh I wonderful try so hard in that class I no doubt I mean you guys are very different how did how did a person you know passionate about sports and somebody who's more from the creative side um how did y'all become friends oh boy so austin moved to hillcrest in a sixth grade and you know me and my hillcrest crew we're a really tight bunch we have a really tight grade and you know but we always get the new kid and you know i would hate i, I hate i would hate to be the new kid 
because you know walking into that new middle school that you don't know anybody in yeah it kind of it was a little scary it i'm sure it's scary but we would always try to when somebody new would come we'd try to make them our friend and we'd try to you know pull them in bring them because there were different groups that you could go to when you'd get yeah. like in and they'd pull at you and be like oh you should be in our group you want to be our friend <laughs> yeah and you know we we were just like hey you know i'm so and so nice to meet you and you know me and austin just kind of we clicked we hit it off we were good friends and you know we haven't been just you know best best friends forever but mm -hmm. we've always known each other and we've always been you know you know what's a good word well okay i i, I know what you mean like Oh man, I can't think of a word. But I mean, see, we're very different. I feel like we're mm -hmm. like two sides, of, or like two sides of a coin, kind of. Like I've, um, like I was never really much of like a, a uh, what's the word? Like for grades, I never really cared for grades when I was young. And so, sixth grade, I just I noticed Alex and his like, I mean, he can agree with this. So many people had this odd attraction to alex and so it would always be kids at the i'll never forget dude <laughs> people would fight to get to his lunch table and so that just kind of well not literally fist fight but you know <laughs> just have like a little <laughs> a little dispute to get to his lunch table because he was like the cool guy and so i was like huh you know i mean like i kind of wonder like what alex is actually like because people look at him like he's a celebrity or something but i just see him as an actual person i'm not a celebrity he is just not for the hint if you're listening, yeah, not trying to like build Alex up too much, but um, yeah, people just really like, I feel like sometimes people just kind of forgot. He's just like them. He's just like really cool, really fun to get along with and just an all around fun guy. And so I just kind of wanted to be someone that didn't treat him like anything. I just wanted to like treat him like a normal person. And so I feel like he kind of uh, liked that, um, like a little. Like, yeah. I didn't treat you. you well, know, I knew that, Austin, I knew that you mm -hmm. were someone that there were no strings attached yeah. to, you know, if I need you to do something for me, you, you were you were going to help me. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why I came to you with this, because I know that you're a you're an interesting guy. Mm -hmm. And like like he, he mentioned, you, you're creative. You know, yeah. you've got that flair to you that it's, it's interesting to hear you talk. Yeah. And... I just knew yeah. that there's there's no strings attached to your relationship, and you know I don't have to be yeah all up around you all the time to still be your friend, and that's how it is with some people. Yeah, I mean, like I kind of saw the same thing with you. Like whenever you talk, there's that special little like hidden flame behind like just hidden the words flame. they speak. No, I mean I don't, I'm just reusing your words, but I think I think that what's what makes your podcast so successful is yeah. that you can cover two completely different sides you can you know approach things do you guys um also talk to each other during your podcasts or do you record your interviews separately that yeah. is a good point that we've brung up before we have a special segment on one of our episodes called rebel cast unscripted where basically all of us who do the podcast came together and we just talk mm -hmm. we just had a conversation with everybody That's we nice. had it was a very fun segment. Oh, it, it's that. my favorite segment my favorite, we've ever yeah. done. But basically, we just talked about important, you know, serious things and not serious things. Like, for mm -hmm. example, our big debate was the which is better, <laughs> a goldfish or a whale's you cracker? Know, cracker. Yeah. Uh, what is your opinion on the goldfish versus whales? Like, have you had both? I've had goldfish. I don't think I've had whale's cracker. Well, yeah. don't. Yeah, because you... <laughs> It's like I like to call it the off-brand yeah. goldfish, uh, but some people believe that whales are a superior version. But that's that was our big debate. Yeah, and I had actually never tried a goldfish or a whale before we talked about it. So in our next episode, we had a segment where I blind re food reviewed. Yeah, the <laughs> with, uh, with Laney with, with Laney, and I determined that goldfish are the best fish cracker. Yeah. But I'm I'm on his side, and it's I'm just, gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try those out now. We need to get them. Yeah, need to. It's so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't think whales would be too happy about sponsoring us, but goldfish definitely. Yes, I think they would love to. But so it's just often, kind of like a, oh, you you got to oh, tell us you got to tell us who which person dead or alive you would want to have as a guest. 
Oh, you mean Alex. You mean Alex. I'm sorry, Alex. Sorry, Alex. Yeah, Your names okay. are so close. Man, <laughs> it's okay. I was hoping that you were going to move on with this question because yeah, I, I was I thinking tell. about it. I could tell you were I, hoping. I was thinking about it, and there's so many good good um, choices, but I'm thinking that if I had to pick somebody, I would pick probably – I think I would go way back in time and I would talk to like an emperor or like Julius Caesar because I'm a history buff. When I was young, I would watch documentaries like of everything for, for fun. Like Ken Burns documentaries on wars were my go-to for entertainment, which some people think that is the most boring thing in the world, but I eat that up all the time. But I would probably talk to Julius Caesar or maybe, um, uh, General uh, MacArthur, because they have they have unique stories that they can tell about um, things that people may not know about and would never know about if it wasn't for their first person experience with yeah. it. And that's the thing: history history is written by the good guys or by the winners. And there's so many little facts that are lost to time mm-hmm. that only the people who were there can tell. So it would be so interesting to talk to someone who has been through a lot and can, can, can tell me yeah. about it. Like anything they say would literally shock you or surprise you because mm-hmm. you wouldn't know it's yep. so far back. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to, I've got one more uh, thing I want to ask about, but before then people are probably curious what the name of your podcast is and where they can find it. Um, uh, we have, we, uh, we, I think we said the name a couple times, but we yeah. did just straight. Yeah. I mean, we casually like mentioned oh. it, but we didn't like outright say what it was. Um, you can say, so our podcast name is rebel cast with a capital R and a capital C. And if you're wanting to listen to it, you can find it on Spotify right now. I'm currently trying to get us on Apple music, but I'm having issues with that. Maybe, maybe you can help me with that since I know that you guys are available for streaming every everywhere, but we're currently available on Spotify. It's Rebelcast, no space in between. Our logo is actually a funny story. Um, Austin, yeah. I'm gonna let you explain the logo real fast because it's yeah. a really interesting story. It goes to his artistic um Yeah. It, it came in handy. I mean uh one day we were just having a quick little meeting. I think it was like after our like second uh our second release. And so we had to come up with a logo for the Spotify uh, channel. And so I walked in, I was almost late actually by like two minutes. And so I had to like be in there and then go to class because I was going to be late, but that was Alex's first period. And so I just, I had to be in there in and out. And so then they were like talking about a logo. And so I just kind of, you know, picked up a marker and just drew a megaphone. And then with the, like the label was rebel cast. And they were like, talking about it and they're like hey wait he just drew that on the board i mean look at that i mean it took 30 seconds yeah it was it was like a piece of art (laughs) and And we were like why are we still arguing let's just use this and we used it and it's stuck ever since maybe one day we'll go back and make make a different logo but for now i'm just i'm just fine with the one we have it's very iconic at least because as soon as i see that megaphone on spotify i'm like oh that's That's our podcast that's our podcast Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> That's excellent. Well, we'll also link to it in the show notes um, of this episode. Uh, and I, I can promise you tonight, I'm going to go back and download them all so I can listen to them. So awesome. Um, now, awesome. during the break, we, we were talking about Luke um, and Emily and you guys were talking about things that I don't even know about uh, those games you guys were talking about. So so can you go can you go into that a little bit, but do it um, at a first grade level so I'll understand? Okay. <laughs> so, so we have a club that is brand new at O'Bion County Central High School that I, I actually wrote the grant to get the money to start this club. Oh. It is called the, it's an esports club. And if you don't know what esports is, you are playing video games representing your school in competitions against other schools. And if you win enough games, you qualify for the playoffs. And if you win your playoff, you win money for scholarships. And if you, you also win a free – or not a free trip, you get a travel voucher for a trip to Dallas, Texas, to the National 
high school esports league championship game where you get to play against people from all over. You get to be in one of those big stadiums with your gameplay plastered on the wall. It just sounds like an amazing opportunity. I'm a part of one of the teams here. We're we're in a close race for the playoffs. I'm actually very nervous. And one of the guys that we play against who is from Ohio, I believe his name is Jamod, which is an odd name, but he has won 10 grand in scholarships through video games and has like a full ride to college for playing it. And I guess that just goes to show that you can like online and technology and I guess playing video games is a viable option for your future. And I, it just blows my mind that that's something that we can do. And I think it's a good club for our school to have because, you know, the kids who are a part of it are really the kids that need to be a part of something because, you know, some kids who aren't, you know, gifted athletically, you know, they, they can't be on the basketball team. You know, they're not, they just don't feel like they fit in, but in a club like this where you can just grab two, three friends and, go be a part of it, it, it helps grows, it grows friendships with your fellow schoolmates. And I think it's good to keep these kids that aren't really on the best paths yeah. in a good environment. Yeah. Now what kind of, which games are you actually playing? So we have, there's a few options for you to play right now. We have a successful rainbow six siege team, which is a five V five kind of, Call of Duty like game. I'm just I'm trying to dumb it down to it's like first a, grade level. It's like a five people versus five people. And it's a and shooter. It's a, it's a shooting game. We've also have a Rocket League game. That's a very very popular game. It's yes. a it's basically car soccer, which um, we have a very good team for that. And they're they're mm -hmm. they have a very good shot at going all the way, which is awesome because that is a I mean I I did not think when I started this that we would be an actual contentions because if you win the national championship i forgot to add this you win one hundred fifty thousand dollars in scholarships and that wow. is that's great that's do you yeah, guys know uh jack warner the uh lawyer in town he's he's he plays those video games too and he's got huge setup he was telling me about so i thought maybe he might help coach you guys or something. i have no idea but he seems like someone that could help us out with this yeah he listens to our podcast so a shout out to him um <laughs> So what's so what's next for your podcast? What do you hope? So are you going to go on a little hiatus uh, during the summer when you're when you're out of school? That's a good I'm, question. Yeah, I've thought about it recently, and I'm thinking that we're going to have seasons. So season one is going to be from now until Christmas, and after Christmas, we're going to try we're going to try and brainstorm over Christmas break and just gather some ideas for what we can do and what we can do to make it better. And, you know, we may even start making it longer, but as long as we have, you know, interesting things to talk about. Yeah. What I'm worried about is I want this to keep going once we all graduate. We have two years left of this podcast, so I'm trying to find um, younger, lower classmen that are willing mm -hmm. to do what we've done and carry it on. But it worries me because I don't want to give it to someone and then them just give up on it because it's a lot of work. I never thought it would be this much trouble to do it. I mean, because it's not just a matter of sitting down and recording yourself talk. You have to set up the interviews and work mm -hmm. around their schedules. And then you've got your own schedule and then well, something comes up and you can't do it or you're sick. And we try to get one episode out of one episode out every week. And sometimes I mean, we, we've been unsuccessful one week before, and we made up for it. We made an extra long episode the next that's week. That's where the Rebel Cast Unscripted mm -hmm. came from, pretty much. But we're going to try and hit it hard until Christmas break, and then have a little decompression session, you know, just think about what we've done wrong, what we can do better on, and then we're going to hit it hard again in January. We only do it on – we only release an episode when we're in school on Thursday. Yeah. So, like, there will be no episode uh, over Thanksgiving break. So now last question, have you guys thought at all about working for a museum this summer, like Discovery Park of America? Because, you know, we're always looking for docents and folks to work here. You got plans for the summer yet? I, me personally, I've actually heavily considered actually working at Discovery Park because I have two friends, um, Trey Wright, 
and then uh, Lainey Taylor. They both work there. And uh, me and my girlfriend, we, we both want to work there because uh, we've heard that the pay is pretty good. Like, um, it's not like something that's going to make your back hurt for the rest of your life. You know, you don't have to worry about that. It's, it's not like a hard labor job. It's, it's, it's a good like way to learn how to like work basically. And I mean, I've never had a job before. Some people like my age already, they already have jobs and stuff, but. Well, and then I, you get I, to work with me. I get to work so, with you. Yeah, what can, go, what can yeah. go bad with that? Exactly. See, that's when I'm, I'm really wanting to work there. Pretty much. Um, now, That's I it. said that was the last question, but let me ask one more question oh, no. um, because w I made your acquaintance when we were working on the Rotary uh, trip, um, which I believe you guys are both going on the Rotary trip. So tell the listeners a little bit um, about uh, uh, Obion County Rotary Club and the trip that they put together every year. So me and Austin were – graciously accepted to go on the this year's um union or obine county rotary europe trip that they put together every year for a group of students from each school high school in obine county it's south fulton um, union city obine county central so basically rotary is an organization that um is it's a worldwide organization that mm -hmm. um helps just it, it helps people and it just tries to serve the community but they do a lot of things with young students and people like me and Austin like they give out scholarships to people who go to college they give out these trips and so me and Austin are going to Europe um it's going to be a whole lot of fun um Austin you have uh yeah I'm I mean Rotary is like I think this actually got quoted in the newspaper recently um I I just think Rotary is so awesome because it, it allows, like, I mean, me, my family's not the richest in the world. I mean, we're not, we're not really, you know, money wise, like too, like too good, you know? And so, I mean, we, we still make a living, but there is absolutely no way that I could have ever, you know, at least as of right now and in in probably in the next decade mm -hmm. could have even planned to go to Europe. And so the fact that I, you know, I committed to, you know, going to these, like going to these meetings and, you know, like actually getting involved with the Rotary Club. It's just, it's mind boggling to me that I can actually go on a trip of a lifetime. And I just think that's beautiful. Honestly, I'm all about like appreciating life and stuff. And so I just think it's awesome that me and Alex and some of the other people that have been accepted and the Washington DC trip, even like, I mean, you know, it either trip, you know, it just, it's honestly kind of life changing. And so, I mean, I just, I think it's wonderful. And so, yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's, that's the key word is, is what I like. you guys don't even realize how much this is going to change your life going on that trip. Um, travel anywhere changes your life. But, you know, when you go to Europe, um, the pro yeah, and so for those of you who are listening, who don't know, the process is uh, these young people prepare and then are interviewed. Um, and it's quite an extensive process. Uh, were you nervous when you came in to be interviewed? So I'm not the type of person to get nervous until right, like the very <laughs> second before yeah. uh, I do something. So like when I was a uh, perfect example of this is when I was in a uh, seventh grade, I was in a play at Hillcrest uh, for a drama oh. club and I was, I was feeling good. I was feeling myself. Like I was about to go out there and rock it. And I get up there right to right beside the curtain and I like throw up in my mouth and I'm like my stomach, I'm overcome with just absolutely everything yeah. that I should have been could, feeling up to this point. Yeah. But then once I step in there and I start doing my thing, I'm like, you know, this isn't so bad. Yeah. And that's how it was for the interview. I was trying I not to, I was trying not to think about it. <laughs> just trying to go in there. You know, it's yeah. no big deal. I'm just going to talk, be who I am. And then I get to there, I sit down in the waiting chair and I'm like, oh my goodness, I am, I am, I cannot do this. <laughs> I, when I get in there and I see a group of people and they just, they greet me, they say hello and I just go into it and I do what I've been working on uh, and it's, it's history. I mean, yeah, 
I, I remember when I walked out of my interview because I was like the second one. And I remember seeing Alex and one of the, oh, darn, I wish I could shout him out. I don't remember his name, but it was one of the interview people. You were in there. And so they told me to act like it was the worst thing oh, ever. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I went out, and he was the first person I went to. I was like, oh, my God, Alex, they started asking me all these hard questions. And I didn't know any of them. I don't think I'm going to be able to go on the trip. And I, I was, like, stressing out about it with quotes. And, oh, my God, <laughs> it was hilarious. No, I'm, I mean, was I nervous? I don't want to sound cocky when I say this, but no, I actually wasn't nervous because I realized that this is such like a life changing, um, like experience. And so I, I really just need to put myself out there and I need to just suck it up, go in there, be who I am, like what Alex said, and just go get him. You know, I just had that like very optimistic optimistic attitude now i can't say the same for whenever we got the call because later that day once you have the interview um for those who don't know you uh you know later that night about like seven to eight o'clock you don't know when it just it happens you get a call and so that leading up to that after the interview was done oh my gosh i was so nervous i was sweating i was like oh my god I, what if I, cause you don't get a call. I don't think if you don't get any trip at all. So I was like worrying that I wasn't going to get any call. And so, um, the woman, well, that and I wonder, um, I think probably a close feeling to that is when you've applied for colleges and you're waiting yes. to see which ones and you're, you're going to get in. And, and you get what's, the letter. What's good about this though, is that for college, you have to wait like forever to get a response. At least yeah. with this, it was a one day, yeah. one call. And it was a lot, it was um, I like I found out like I was like, OK, I wonder when uh, I'll be able to, you know, be notified. And then later that day, my sister, who had who had done it before, shout out to Destiny. Uh, she she went on the Washington, D.C. trip and she's like, oh, yeah, you're going to get the call tonight. And I'm like, tonight, I need to turn my phone on. What am I doing? And so I started walking back and forth. I was like, oh, my God, mom, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And so we got the call. And as soon as she pronounced the word Europe trip, I was like, I jumped. I was like, yes. And the poor woman, she probably was so scarred. From <laughs> but well, was, I know you guys, you guys are going to get a lot out of it. Yeah. Um, and um, it, it's going to, it honestly is going to change your lives. Yeah. Um, and I'm so grateful that you took some time out of your schedules. I know you guys have a lot to do that. You took some time out to uh, hang out with us here and talk a little bit about your podcast. It is no trouble at all. It's absolutely wonderful to get this opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you you look at when you're younger or just in general, and you're like, I could never do that. Yeah. Why would this ever be me? And now it's amazing to think, hey, we're here. Yeah. And yep. if anything, it's like more like we should be thanking you mm -hmm. because this is such like a, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm we're actually on a real podcast. You know, it's it's really nerve wracking, and so I just think it's. Really nice, you know, being on here. And thank you for the opportunity. Oh, you bet. And now when you guys get ready to start planning your summer out, you know where you're going to put your application in first is with me, right? Yeah. Yes. No, I may uh, consider that. That sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, now you can, you can work there with Discovery me. Discovery Park. You can work there with me and Tessa, dude. We can, we can, Discovery Park. We're going to be Absolutely. The best you will inspire children and adults to see beyond, right? Yes. Yes. Beyond. yes. Oh, my gosh. Okay, thank you guys. And thank you to all you listeners who joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here, as I said, is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com. Discovery Park of America.